Hey guys, this is Adam from BC Fig Farm and Fruit Orchard and today is July 13th and I just wanted to go over my in-ground fig trees that I left unwrapped for the winter time. I know I was telling everybody I was going to get back to them about the progress of these fig trees and I have a little bit of a mixed report on these, these fig trees in the ground. Um, some of them are doing well, some of them are not doing well, some of them died. So let's go over a couple of the issues we had with our in-ground fig trees in zone 6b over here in new jersey bergen county um, as you can see this lsu gold is coming back very well um, and most of my fig trees let me give a quick scan of most of my fig trees in the ground that i cut down to the to the base most of them are doing well in the ground i had a couple couple that have not come back yet a couple that are slow uh, but the whole thing is about fig production. Are we going to get figs out of our in-ground fig trees this year? So if we're not going to get figs from these trees, no sense in keeping them in the ground. We'll rip them out and put them back in containers. And we'll store them in a heated environment during the winter time. <clears throat> okay, so this LSU gold, you can see, is growing very well. It came back from the roots, from the base, from cutting it down. I did not wrap any of these trees that I'm showing you this year. So I just wanted to show you the progress of what we have for these fig trees. It came right back from the roots, from the bottom, as you can see. I exposed the roots so it was able to grow back. And this LSU gold is doing pretty well, but will we get figs? Do we see any figlets between the leaves? Okay, we see one coming in right there, but will it produce in time to eat? And normally these figs need 120 days to produce. So we're gonna have to wait and see on that one right there. Let's see a couple of our other trees. This is a little slow. This is a black mission in the ground from California. This is a little slow on the growth there. Um, and when they have our Violet Day Normandy right here, it's growing very well. But again, I only see, oh, we can see a fig coming in right down here. And Okay, we see one fig coming in right down there. So we'll see if we're able to get figs from this tree in the uh, in September, October. I do see that this tree is doing very well, this fig tree. This is was cut all the way back. And this is our white Madeira number one. Very good fig tree. And we cut it all the way down and grew all the way back from the base. We did not cover it this winter time. And as you can see, so far, I think this is one of our best fig productions so far for coming back and just leaving it in the ground, letting it grow back. I see one fig, I see two figs growing, three, four. So th this one will probably get figs from this year, this white Madeira. And again, we have another fig tree that we cut down. It grew very well. Now we have to see, this is the LSU Champagne the fig that tastes like champagne i love this fig it's so delicious but will we get fig production from this fig tree in the ground the growth is great on some of these and on others growth is great on this one can we see any figs coming through yes we see figs coming through on this one and this is our brooklyn white this is a good fig tree for the for the uh, Northeast, because a lot of people in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got good fig production from this tree growing back, not covering it. So this is a very cold hardy fig in zone 6B. And we have a lot of figs growing. Actually, I see a couple of them down there. And even if you want more fig production from the strongest, from the strongest uh, area of the fig tree, you just cut these little ones away and then you'll have bigger figs on the one trunk coming up what do we have here this is growing very well this this tree right here is amazing we have a little bit of a little bit of a weed issue and we just take that right out because we don't want any weeds sucking up water from our trees this is our violet de bordeaux and we'll see if we can have any figs. We have a couple little figlets coming in there and it's growing very well. And you can see that the deer next to my Violet de Bordeaux were munching on my fig trees and my fruit trees, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. And looks like the deer 
This was growing very well, and then the deer had a little dinner last night with this one. And I have to get that spray that my buddy told me about. This is our Lange out from France. I really like this fig tree, but the deer are having a heyday with it. I guess they like it too. Now look at the growth on this tree. This is amazing. This fig tree is almost four feet tall. I cut it down to nothing before the winter time. And it's just amazing. This right here. And I'm trying to get you guys a little picture of what it is and what type of tree it is. And this is the Deanna, the Deanna fig tree, California. And uh, this is a very fast growing fig. And I like to just cut the bottoms off. I don't like any leaves laying in the dessert, in the, um, in the dirt for infection for the tree. I don't want it to be infected, no leaves on the ground. But this tree is amazing. This tree grew very big this year. It's, do we have any figs growing? And do we have any figlets? Let's check it out. It grew very well, but we got no, we have no figlets yet on this tree. I'm very disappointed because this is a very good fig and I wanted to produce figs. So we're gonna have to wait and see. And other trees, like I said, are slower growing than, than certain trees. As you know about human genetics, it's the same thing in fig genetics. You get some good, some bad, and you just have to take it with a grain of salt and cater to your fig trees any way you can. This is the Sister Madeline Mary Greek from the monastery in Greece. And I had this as a cutting and I put it in the ground last year and it seems to be growing very well this year. If the deer would need it. Right there, Sister Mary Madeline Greek. Another nice fig tree right here came back from the ground uncovered, which is amazing. We didn't have a very cold winter this year, but you know what? We still have winters and your fig trees are gonna die and I'm gonna show you that in a second. So stand by. Another small fig tree that I planted last year. And this is our strawberry verte. I never had any luck with this strawberry verte. I'm gonna probably have to rip it out and put it in a container because it's not growing very quickly for me, and I really want to taste these strawberry verte figs. I'm too excited. I'm going to rip it out of the ground and put it in a container. It's growing slowly. What do we have here? What do we have here? We have our Jack Lily. Another one that's a slow grower. I don't know why the Jack Lily and the strawberry verte are slow growers. They're one of my two slowest growers. I wouldn't recommend them if I were you, unless you put them in a container and fertilize them. I wouldn't recommend them as figs that I would put in the ground. I don't even know if I would have them in a container. I haven't received any figs. I've had them for two years already. Okay. Okay, let's talk about, well, let's go over the rest of the ones here that survived the winter time, and then we'll talk about what has passed away this winter or not came back. Here's our Portuguese, our Portuguese fig tree doing very well in this tropical weather. This, and I can't believe a uh, fig tree from Portugal now is coming back after cutting it back. It's a, a slow grower, but you know what? It's still coming back. It didn't die. You know, here is our uh, Kessariani from Greece. And this Kessariani is coming back again, no figs. So we're going to have to see if these fig trees give us a production of figs. If not, we're not going to leave them in the ground. We're going to cut them right out and put them back in containers. Another great fig tree that came back this year. And this is our Genovese Nero from Italy. Our Genovese Nero. And this is, a, this is an Italian, another Italian fig tree. I see no figs. Uh, I'm probably gonna rip it out because like I said, I love Genovese Nero figs. And if I don't get figs, why leave them in the ground? The whole idea of growing fig trees is to get fig production. If you're not getting fig production, you need to change your game plan. Another one that I thought died back to the ground. This is the BB10. This is one of my favorite fig trees. Uh, these are the big, beautiful Black Beauty figs. And I'm probably going to rip that out of the ground too because I want figs from those. And I also want the Brebis from those. Okay, what do we have here? What else survived the winter? The Silica Sitka. 
Basilica Sicca from Italy again. Very small comeback. We're gonna have to do something about that. And the, here we go. You can start to see that this one's starting to come back in near a 600M from the mountains of Italy. It's just starting to come back. We're not gonna get a big growth on this. We're gonna have to rip it out, put it back in a container. Um, and then we have these other trees that are growing massively. Let me get this one root out of here. And we have our Sao Miguel Roxo. Sao Miguel Roxo. That uh, is doing very well. Look at massive four feet production after cutting it back to the base. And it's growing very well. And we have our... Let's get this out of here. We have our... Uh, Texas Everbearing. And I've left this in here now for a year and a half, this Texas Everbearing. And as you can see, what's amazing is it's a slow grower. My friend has a Texas Everbearing that's shooting all the way up to the sky. It's already five feet. I put this in the same time he put it in. And it just goes, goes to show you that this is only about 24 inches tall. His is about almost five feet. It just goes to show you that if you wrap them during the winter time, they'll just keep growing and producing and growing and producing. But here's one amazing thing about this Texas Everbearing coming back that this Texas Everbearing at this size already has figs, which is amazing. So as you can see, we have figs on this Texas Everbearing that we're gonna be able to get this year even though it's small in size. So it doesn't matter if it's small in size, it may still produce figs. And another one where these, you gotta take these out, see these weeds? You gotta take them out or they're gonna suck the water right from your fig tree and your fig tree's not gonna produce. Uh, this is from Italy also. This is the Tarama, one of my favorite figs. Again, the Italian figs don't seem to be doing well in the ground. We're going to have to put them back in containers because we want the fig production from this Taramo Italian fig tree. And this one is amazing. This is the only one from Italy that is growing massively. This is growing massively. And I've always had good production with this fig tree and I can't believe I cut it back I didn't think it was going to come back this year but look at the beautiful leaves on this already in the middle of July look at the thickness of this tree we're starting to see some figlets come out from between the leaves here and this is the Sal's Cordelione from Italy and I can't believe the growth on this so if you wanted to leave an Italian tree uncovered out of all my Italian trees in the ground I would have to say that the Sal's Cordelione will probably do best growing back and probably we're going to see in October, September, October, if it's going to give us figs. But I would have to say out of all the Italian trees, if you left uncovered in your yard and you left in full sun, would mulch around it for the wintertime and cut it down. The South Cordelione is some grower. I'm going to take more cuttings of this issue. This is one of my favorite fig trees, but what a beautiful in-ground fig tree that came back. It's already three and a half feet. It'll probably be six feet by the end of the year. And that's it. All right. We got a couple a couple back here that I did rip out of the ground already. And they're in containers. And you can see that they have died bound. They weren't coming back. But now they're growing back after you put them in containers. This one is the Chicago Hardy. That Chicago Hardy is a great fig tree. You can actually get Chicago Hardy. And you can get brown turkey at any Home Depot. They sell them. You can also get a variety of uh, nine different varieties, I believe six or nine at Corrado's in Clifton. I like to go see what fig trees they have. Uh, sometimes in Clifton and Corrado's, they have about six to nine different varieties from all over the world. Uh, normally, you know, the cold hardy ones, they won't, they won't stock any that are not cold hardy unless you request it for specialty. But again, this was in the ground, just ripped it out. We had a problem with it growing, coming back. It was, I thought it was dead. And don't ever think your fig trees are dead because they will come back and they will grow. If they don't grow after one season, then they are dead. But this one I thought was dead and it came back. And now you can see how nice it is. I put it back in a container. It's going to go back in my garage. Um, and then we're going to be able to have figs next year from it. Okay, those are a couple of my in-ground fig trees that we went over. Now let's talk about 
the in-ground fig trees that did not make it this year uh that i believe so far did not make it i don't know if they're gonna sprout up towards august or september but i'm i'm calling them i'm gonna say they didn't make it because i don't see any root growth right now and you can see how this one right here okay this was in the ground i believe it's dead we're gonna have to pull it we're gonna have to grow it again we're gonna have to take the tag we're gonna have to order another another uh i think i already have another copy of this uh, that's one thing that i took copies of all these fig trees before i took cuttings and i'll show you the cuttings in a second as soon as we get to that part of the video but one thing i did this year because i was scared that stuff was going to die back was i took cuttings of all my fig trees and i'm going to show you what i'm growing over there on the other side of the yard uh in containers from the cuttings this winter but this um what is this this is the Adriatic JH. I have a copy of that over there, but that, that didn't make it. I think it's dead. Um, I don't think we're going to get any root growth. I'm going to leave it though. I'm going to leave, you always leave it one season to see if it's going to grow back. Uh, maybe it will in a future video. I'll show you, but I, I doubt it's going to make it. That has, that has died. Uh, let's continue. I'm real disappointed in this one right here. I thought this would come back. This is, uh, from Francis tree. This was my one of my favorite trees, the Sucret. It was large. I should have left it in a container. I thought it was cold hardy from France. So far, it has not grown back. And as you can see, we're already in the middle of July. I have no growth from it. I'm going to leave it, though, till the end of the year and see if we can get anything to come up from it. You know, it's not dry. It's wet. As you can see, the, the roots are great. I just don't know why it came back. It didn't come back. I don't understand. Um, you know, you think it would grow back from the roots being in the ground. The roots are healthy, you know, got enough water, but we're just going to have to wait. And you know what? I took a copy of the Sucret, so I'm not worried. I'm going to, I'm going to grow another Sucret fig tree and it'll grow in one year and I'll have figs again and I'll leave it in the container. And that's that Sucret fig tree. Let's go over here. So as you can see on that side of the property, we really only had two out of 25 fig trees die, really. We only had two. So on this side, um, very few. I think we have two that, that died also. Um, let me see. Uh, looks like we had yeah one or two. But now, here we go. I thought this one died, and look, it's coming back. I just saw this this morning. This was not here. And you could see it's coming out from the sides. It's growing again. It did not die. This is this is why everybody who grows fig trees, if you think it has died in the ground, and this is my Dave Sicilian. I got this from my friend Dave uh, in Mawa in Fardale. And he's uh, one of the Italian guys that I buy fig trees from and uh, discuss fig trees. And uh, he got this from Italy. Uh, it was an unknown fig tree. He named it Dave Sicilian because it was from Sicily. He got it from Sicily, brought it back, and it's a delicious fig. I left it uncovered this year, and I'm so happy it's growing back now. So now i got to protect the roots. We're going to put a little stuff up against the roots to protect it now that it's growing back. And we're going to have this fig tree, and I'm probably going to rip this out too. Put it back in a container because I'm not growing something I'm not getting figs from. Okay, And the other one from this side that did not come back is our what do we have here Italian 215 I've had trouble with this tree ever since I got it even when it was in a container I told my friend Tommy LaPiccolo about it Italian 215 you know had problems growing in a container had problems growing it never produced never grew well but I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna see if it comes back if it does I'm gonna rip it out and put it in a container and I see one more, one more fig tree that has, has gotten away from me. Uh, and I have a copy of this, so I'm not worried. This is the Godfather from Italy. Again, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to remove some mulch here and see if we can get some roots growing for this Godfather tree on this side and see if we can get the growing has not come back, left it in the ground. Another Italian fig tree. This is from the Godfather movie. And uh, I had a cutting from this given to me and I grew it. 
and I made a cutting for this winter, so I'm not worried. I have an extra cutting of this godfather tree, but let's see if we can get the roots to grow from this moist side right here. And it gets, if these roots are wet, maybe we'll get a little growth from some of these roots, but we'll have to wait and see. I just want it to grow so I can put it back in a pot. If not, I have a cutting. So out of all the trees we just went over in the back that are not in containers, we had five that died. So that's our report for our in-ground fig trees that we left this year. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Adam from BC Fig Farm and Fruit Orchard signing off. Uh, a couple of our next videos are going to be on our fruit trees, our grapevines, and our container fig trees. And let's get a wide view of the fruit orchard so far this year. The fig trees that are growing, coming back, grapevines and everything. And stand by. We'll be back with the next video. Thank you.